must come where I want to welcome our, our own, our board member, the daughter of this soil, very passionate about Kagumo, very supportive. And somebody who listens. One of the characteristics I've learned from her is that uh, even after becoming the Her Excellency, even when I call, I, 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 I want to talk to her, even in a meeting, she will call me after the meeting. And we discuss about the school and the support. That's a hallmark. Number two, she tells me, I'm playing for you. I'm playing for the boys. I'm playing for the school and for the board. Putting God first. Nothing evil is going to happen. Number three, a simplicity and going all the way to make sure that at least she has remember, remember she is now the mother of Kenya. And the concern about the boy shower, the programs, the board, and she is going for the venerable, the widows, the disability, the, the boys, and so on. You see that the way others have not trodden, she's there with them. That's why she's going to get more blessings and more blessings. As you walk this journey for the remaining time, I know with the consultation, with the advice, with the, now she has known where the, the old boys are. She can allow to them and tell them, go back to the school. Do something, do something. Those boys do no. She cannot do it alone. But we of the moshalas of the of the commerce of this world and the Kidan and Dongo, they can do something if they want. If they have a big heart, like the conyos and the macharias of this world. We want to welcome you to speak, particularly to these young people, the boy where your passion is. And uh, we allow you to tell us what you have for this country and especially for the young men. Welcome, everybody stand up. So welcome, uh, Excellency. Welcome with the club. Lift up your voice. So you know who you are. Shout in love. <laughs> the principal of Kagumo High School, Dr. Cyrus Mwerege, the deputy principal, Mr. Kenua and Mr. Daniel Gitonga, the chair of the board and board members present here today, the president, the student president of this great Kagumo High School, Robert Irongo, the deputy and the entire cabinet of this school. You know, I am the spouse of the deputy president, so I know that we have a president to respect. <laughs> and a cabinet that has been operational. God bless you. Old boys of Kagumo High School, like Dr. Gekonyo and your dear wife, Engineer Masharia, who is here, and the many who have come today, I salute you. Dear parents, teachers who are present here today with us, my dear boys and sons, ladies and gentlemen, and our very dear parents, good afternoon. It is with immense uh, joy that I join you today in celebrating 90 years of, the great in of this great institution that has not only transformed lives, but also made a great mark in our society. You will all agree with me that this is one of the most sought after schools in the country due to the quality of products which are the students it produces. And it has also produced there before. Without a doubt, Kagumo High School alumni are found in senior positions both in government and in private sector in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, if Chief Wambogo Waiwa would wake up from the dead today, 
I am sure he would not regret giving out a land in this area of Geganjo for the relocation of this school. The school performance over the years has, has proved the efforts of the founders. I look at the performance for the last two years, and indeed I can attest that this is a school of many to choose. And even in many years, I believe we are going to climb to better height, to better dimensions, because we can do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a mean grade of 9.58 in 2022 and 9.77 in 2021 is evidence that the school is shaping great leaders of this nation. For the two years, we have had over 50 students with a clean A grade and close to 200 with A minus. The university entry of the school is encouraging and I urge the current students to take cue from their older brothers who went through the same school. I believe that if they could do it, you can do it better. We all celebrate the third governor of Nyeri County, that Wahome Gakuru, as an alumni of the school, former CS Health, Honorable Mutai Kagwe, and uh, um, Engineer Masharia, former Nyandarwa Governor Francis Kememia, the famous um, speaker Kenneth Marende, Catholic Archbishop Anthony Moheria. We have Dr. Gekonyo, who is my doctor for many years, she is here. James Mwangi, and many other names. I may not mention all of them here. And even those ones who are here who are sitting, they are great men in their own right. We look forward. And you know, when I say those great men who are sitting here as the old boys, and those who have in the past contributed to this country and the society and the communities, not only in Kenya, but international. I also look forward to mentioning your names, my boys and my sons in the near future as Kenyans who have made it in this country and in other countries. <laughs> Bishop Simon Mwangi, who works in my office and who is here with me is an alumni of this school. He is the head of chaplinacy, outreach, and family values. So you can tell that Kagumo is producing all-round men. And I can tell you, if you want to succeed one of the things, my sons, you have to do is to have faith in God and to put that faith to work and serious work. That produces success. And I know with faith in God, faith in yourself and putting that faith to work, there is no height you cannot climb. And I can also confirm to you there are no limits. Even the sky is not your limit. The limit is the one you put for yourself. My coming here to celebrate with you also gives me joy of interacting with a boy child who is close to my heart. I'm sure you have heard me speak of the boy child who I envision of having a dignified future. The future starts here and is shaped by today, because what we do tomorrow, today, we will define what we will be speaking about this in the future. And from the Judges chapter four and five, there was a woman who rose, and I now I want to speak to you as a mother. I know many of you sitting there you see me as the second lady of the Republic and you think I just fell from heaven and I got here. It is not so. 
My background, to many of you who may not know, I come from very obscure background. I was born in Moranga, Donyoshege, location 16. That's what they used to call it, Kadiara. And from there, we grew, and my father died when I was very young. And my mother was left with eight children. And as a widow, she suffered many uh, problems as we were growing up. By the time it was two years after my father died, everything had gone south for us. And we did not even have clothes to wear. We were wearing our father's shirts. And we would wear it from Monday to Sunday. We would go to the river, remove it, stay naked, wash it, and wait for it to dry. And from there, because we couldn't uh, live with our grandmother, because the other grandmother had died earlier. My father was an orphan. And my mother's uh, brothers did not want to stay with us. So we left there, Donyoshege, and we went, we lived in Kiandutu. I'm a product of a ghetto. And here I am. <laughs> when you hear about Hazaras, there are Hazaras and Hazaras. I have hazard in my life and I know what it is. I have known how to stay without shoes. I think I wore my first shoe when I was in Standard 5. When we were going to Alliance, we were admitted both myself and my, my brother, and we did not have school fees. My mom had to pray. She prayed, and because we believed in prayer, somebody paid for our school fees and took us to school. And for many years, we, na we were in alliance, not having school fees, but God provided. So young people, as you sit there, don't encourage yourself and tell yourself that you come from a poor background, you can't succeed. What has got your, 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 your location or your parents got to do with your head? You are carrying it here. I don't think you left it with your parents. Yes. The students who are performing, they are being taught by the same teachers, same language, same class, same everything. So it is your decision to make, to succeed or to fail, it is in your hands. And what you must do is pray very hard, persist and work extremely hard, focused on what you want to be and God will make it happen. Your dreams are valid, and they will be validated by the hard work that you have. And with prayer and God being with you, things are going to be all right. So it is, the Bible says he picks people from nothing to something. And I can tell you, I am a, I'm a miracle and I am a testimony of that, that we were nothing, but from nothing, widow background, kiandutu, dutus, rice, I don't know, bed bugs, everything that goes with poverty, we have known it. Hunger, we knew it. But that does not dictate where somebody is going. Your destiny is fixed by God, not by man, not by opinions of man, not by what you, you clothe, not what you dress, not what people say. Just forget them and focus on what God has called you to do and your dream. So as a mother, I want to tell you, a woman is a, is a person who has a womb. And this womb receives a seed and produces hope and a future for the children. And I told you when you read about Deborah of old, we find she was wearing very many hats. And today, as a mother of this nation, I'm trying to juggle all these hearts. And one of the things that you found this woman called Deborah had, she was a wife of somebody. And I am a wife of a person who sent me to greet you. He's called the one and only Rigiji. <laughs> the truthful man. A man of courage. He says it as it is. 
You don't have to complicate life. Just say as it is. And people will come to know when you speak the truth, the truth will bear you all. And many people don't want to live by the truth. And I love this man. And many people ask, do you pray for him? Of course I pray for him. <laughs> all the time. Because he's one of the boy children. <laughs> if you don't believe that he's a boy children, did you see somebody here who was here in 1959? He's, a, he's an old boy. So boys, they start from cradle to grave. So these boy children, all of them who are here, they are, I am their mother. <laughs> and I must fight for them. I am their champion. And I said, I will walk with you. I will stand for you. I will fight for you until I see you served justice. <laughs> this woman, Deborah also, was a prophetess. And she prophesied about Israel. And let me tell you, I am prophesying. This school is going to go to another dimension. I've been a board member, as they can tell you, for the last five years. And I've been praying for you. And things have been changing in those five years. And I can tell with the people that we have, the board, the old boys, the teachers, no one can be able to stop Kagumo. <laughs> that is my prophecy for you. You can only stop yourself. I want this year you give us better, greater, so that uh, you sit there and I'll be laughing all the way as they, uh, they, they list the rest below. <laughs> this woman was a judge. And I must see that there is justice that is served for creation, and especially by boy children. There is no way a country can be able to negate uh, to negate a seed carrier and we expect to thrive. And therefore, we must fight, protect, and continue to fight for the boy child. We have neglected him, and we are paying very dearly. They are all in the gutter, and all the girls are sophisticated, they are resourced, and they are sophisticated up there without husbands to marry. Why are you talking like you? No, I'm not asking you to go and marry them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you, you do, you are, you are, there is a place for that. Not now. Now you just look from far. <laughs> Those women you see are very good. They can make you or break you. I have seen many of the young men who go uh, committing suicide because they have been jilted. My friends, don't bother about this thing. I'm happy that I hear you guys, you just see the girls in the, in the bus and you pass. <laughs> Ah. But as a mother, I'm not encouraging you to do that. <laughs> All I want is that don't let them mess you and don't mess my girls. There is a place for that. And I'll pray that when it comes, God will give you a good wife. We also hear this woman was a warlord because when she prophesied about a time that captivity of Israel was to be turned around, he called a, a king called Barak. So he gave, she gave counsel to Barak and told him to go to war. Barak would not go to war unless Deborah was there. And let me tell you this, even this, the Rigiji, also gets counsel from also this woman. Yes. I watch because he's a general. You know, a general sometimes is just walking. 
and very courageous. Sometimes I'll tell him, you know, there is one who is aiming at you, so move away from there. <laughs> and therefore, a woman has to war and has to fight for her family. A woman has to fight and make sure that justice is being done to every child. Whether it is a boy or the girl child, justice must be done to all because a mother gives birth to everything. Finally, this woman must be a transformative agent. We are told that in those days of Deborah, there were only villages, villages with men and women and children who had gone by, the, by, uh, by byways. This woman called them into the right path, and this woman also changed the villages. They became city, and that is what we are trying to do with our young men. The drivers of the economy, the drivers of security apparatus, the, uh, the drivers of food security are sitting right in front of you, and we cannot afford to relegate them to oblivion. They must be brought to their decision-making tables. They must be considered. They must work with us, and we must educate them in the right way and protect them as they go and mentor them. This I'm talking to the men now. As a mother, sometimes I grieve because I am seeing the father on this side and I'm seeing the son on this side. When both are fighting, it is the mother that gets hurt. Because I want both of them to interface. We have very many young men who are looking for role models. But if the, all the role models are also in the bus, what are we going to get? We are going to get all these boys following their fathers there. And we are advising, please, let's have the role model. There are many who are there, and they will be coming to you. We will force them to come to you, to mentor you. Because some of the people that we have found in the rehab centers, right now, I have almost 12,000 who are waiting to go to the rehab center. Yesterday, we graduated the first cohort of 80 of them who have gone through a, a phase of rehabilitation and with partnership with the hospitals and many other partners, the clergy, we have graduated the first. There are others who are in the Muru, in a rehab, others are in ASK, Jamuhuri, and we are still continuing. 12,000 are waiting. And as we speak to those ones, they are looking for fathers. So where are the fathers? Every boy wants to know, I have a father. And I can say this without doubt that every one of these ones, even the ones you call for single mothers, they want to know who their fathers are. My sons, don't worry. The fathers are going to come to you. Myself, I'm going to bring all the church fathers. They will be speaking to you. They will be mentoring you. They will be discipling you and taking care of what you need. The only thing I ask of you is that you give me better results. Will you do that? You have seen wakipiga kona wakienda prison naenda uko. Wakipiga kona wakienda dens, I am in those dens even in Mombasa. Why? Because my work as a mother is to nurture and to pull them out of those dens and bring them to their destiny, realign them with their dreams. Because a man who is hopeless and does not see anything in the future is a frustrated man and a dead man. And therefore, we don't want to have the living dead in our men. We want men who are alive with dreams that are alive, with vision that can be clear so that they can continue feeling that they are going somewhere. And mothers, I'm praying that you are going to pray with me and work with me. Will you do that? I heard when we were asked about uh, drugs, say no to drugs. You must say no to drugs. I wish I could have brought you the people in the dance of Mombasa. The other day, I just took some of my friends, men, and I told them they go where I go. When they went there, 
Some of them have not eaten for the last uh, few days. They are fasting and praying. Because they found men who are lost completely. They have been injecting themselves. They have wounds everywhere. Now they are injecting themselves on the chest. And we cannot have a country like that. We must take up our responsibility and be accountable so that those people who are selling poison are put behind yes. bars. Yes. We must protect our boy children. We must also protect the boy child because the girl child will require to be somebody to stand by her side. We, if we need families, this seed carrier must be protected. I will say this boy child until everyone, when you wake up, you'll be saying boy child, boy child, until they are out of the gutters. That is when I will stop. I will say it again and again until it sinks to the societies and communities and this nation because it really angers me. My aim is to see a complete man a respectable man in the society and a man who is able to fulfill the plans that God has for him. During your stay here, some of your friends might try to influence you to, to vices which might ruin your life. I beseech you to focus on your studies and not to be distracted. I have visited many drug dens and my office is in the process of rehabilitating uh, rehabilitating many of these. 2,000 are already in the pipeline and they are being uh, treated and they are taking care of themselves. They have made decision to turn away from drugs. And I'm a very proud mother today. When I see those young men, yesterday when I saw them wear the suits and they look like managers, I knew things were happening in this country. So as I conclude, I want to remind you to always put God first in everything you do, for without God, you can do nothing. And without God, this school cannot get to the next level. I will continue to pray for you, I will continue to support you. I know I have not been here for some time, but I'll make time. Time is created. And I know time and chance are given to every man. Is how you use it and how you use those opportunities that make or break a man or a woman. And I'm very sure I'm going to use the time God has given me to also be in my school. God bless you. God honor you. Thank you.